Okay, our Ten Commandments study, part two. And before we get into each of the commandments that plan, Lord willing, today is about the Ten Commandments. And let's do a little history. In Exodus chapter 12 is the Passover. As Israel prepares to leave Egypt. As Egypt, the firstborn, dies and Pharaoh orders them finally out. And they leave Egypt under the blood of the Lamb, the Passover Lamb, type of Jesus Christ, in the guidance of Moses. Now, there's still no law. And yet, Exodus 12, Israel is now a nation before God. Exodus 14, we have the Red Sea. The children of Israel come to a point in the travels. That the Egyptian army and the Egyptian pharaoh is like, let's go get them. Why do we do? Why do we go? Why do we let them to go? Let's go get them. And Israel's come to the point where God tells them go forward and there's a big sea in front of them. <laughs> and there's no pontoon boats. There's no bridges. There's no walking on the water. And here, the miracle is... That God opens up that sea, dries up the sea floor, and they walk on dry land. No puddles. And the Egyptian army and Pharaoh are drowned in the sea when God closes that water back upon them. In Exodus 16, we have the manna. God mir miraculously <laughs> provides food. For the entire wilderness journey. Until the children of Israel get into the promised land. I believe it's Gilgal. Under Joshua. And they eat of the, of the bread of the land. And then the manna stops. This is where they're to go out every morning. They were to gather a certain amount. A certain break. And those who had a little over. Had no leftovers. Those that had a little under. They were, they were properly fed. And then for the Sabbath day, the day before, they were to gather twice as much and then enjoy the Sabbath of no working. And then Exodus 17 would be the water from the rock, which followed. And, and Paul tells us that that rock is Jesus Christ. So in a wilderness where there's no food and no water, God miraculously provided for the nation of Israel on their journey. Exodus 19, the wilderness of Sinai and Mount Sinai. And let's look at Exodus 19, verse 16. Exodus 19, verse 16. And we'll come up to the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that, were, that there were thunders and lightnings. And a thick cloud upon the mount, Mount Sinai. And the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud. That all the people that was in the camp trembled. So this thunder and lightning storm and the sound of a trumpet. Which is God. Has frightened the people. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the neither part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. It was likened to a volcano, but it's not a volcano. The fire is God. Hebrews says our God is a consuming fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount quake uh, greatly so there's an earthquake a mountain quake there is fire there is smoke there is lightning there is thunder there's a loud trumpet mount sinai in front of the nation of israel and when the voice of the trumpet the voice of the trumpet not the sound of the trumpet not the tooting of the trumpet or whatever sound a trumpet makes the voice 
of the sound of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder. Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord, to gaze, and many of them perish. So Moses is now on top of Mount Sinai, and God said, Get down there. You got to set a boundary. You can't have them cross a line or they're going to die. God is a holy and righteous God and there's a boundary. And now the fire, the, the thunder, the lightning, the loud trumpet, the smoke, and the people are like, remember what Moses did with the with the, the bush that burned with fire? He went a little closer and then God spoke and said, stop. Take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. Let the priest, that's before the law. There was a class of people before the law in Egypt and in the wilderness that had called themselves priests, which come near to the Lord, sanctified themselves, set apart, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou charges them, uh, for they charge us, saying, Set bounds about the mount and sanctify it. Make it holy, make it, you know, put a division. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down. Thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee, but let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break through upon them. Now, this is out Mount Sinai. So Moses went down unto the people and spank unto them what God just told him to do. Hey, get too close. And God spank all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Commandment 1, thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Go down, uh, verses 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 15. All the verses all the way to 17. The original giving of the Ten Commandments. Verse 1 of chapter 20. And God spake all these words, saying, The original giving of the Ten Commandments was not written upon tablets. They were spoken by God from the mountain before the children of Israel that were at that mountain. And all the people heard God say, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, honor thy father and mother, thou shalt not. Everything of the Ten Commandments, not the Catholic version, not the, uh, not the uh, Protestant version, but all that spoken of the King James Bible was spoken orally to the nation of Israel by God. Now, what did God's voice sound like? I have no idea. But notice when you go into the study of the wilderness, that did not change the people's heart at all. They still sin. They still gripe. They still complain. We need food. We need water. Oh, God, let us out here to die. Oh, let's get a group of people and head back to Egypt. Because there are people say, let me see God and I'll get right. The nation of Israel saw God and heard God on Mount Sinai, Exodus 19 and Exodus 20. And that did them no good at all. Chapter 24, verse 12. Chapter 24 of Exodus, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me in the mount, and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone, and a law, and commandment which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. 
So there is the Ten Commandments written on the table. And Moses didn't write them. God did. God wrote them. With his finger. So the Ten Commandments is given orally. Chapter 24, God says, okay, come up here. I've got written down on tables of stone. Here they are. Come get them, Moses. Okay. So. And then you can read the verse 18. But uh, 3118. 3118. Exodus 3118. And he, God, gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai. So God and Moses are on Mount Sinai. No one else is there. Two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. We, Moses now has written by God those tables of stone. And Moses is ready to come back down. Okay. Exodus 32. We have a problem. I'm going to read, have you to read this on your own. Exodus 32. Aaron. Because the children of Israel say, after hearing God's voice, after seeing God, after the thunders, and after the lightnings, and after the trumpet, and after the fear, and after the smoke, and after hearing God quote the Ten Commandments, in Exodus 32, Moses has been gone for 40 days and 40 nights. The people go to Aaron, where's Moses? We don't know what's happened to this Moses. Up and make us gods. And Aaron makes a calf, a golden calf, from the earrings of the Israelites, pops it in the in the furnace, and he claims that Moses out popped his calf. We had likely story when the Bible says in Exodus 32, <laughs> excuse me, that he fashioned it. And Aaron makes his golden calf and says, This is the God. You ought to get some chicken. I'm sorry. Aaron makes his calf, and the children of Israel have a typical Baptist worship service. They have a special holiday. They eat and they drink and they entertain and dance. Before the golden calf. A major sin. When God has told them. The second commandment. And the third commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And thou shalt not make any graven image. Or any idol and worship them. And Aaron. I guess he got rid of a couple commandments. Like the Catholic Church. And uh, Luther's Church. Because he violated the scriptures that God spoke and he made a God of a golden calf. No regard to God speaking orally. So God gets angry. God is angry with them who have idols and images and aids to worship. So. Exodus 34. Exodus 34. Uh, wait a minute. 32. Exodus 32.19. Look at this point, thing. Exodus 32.19. Can't miss this. And, as, and it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, Moses and Joshua, that he saw the calf. And the dancing. They're dancing before the calf. 
And Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. The original autographs of the Ten Commandments were broken by Moses when he saw the golden image of the calf and the people dancing before it. Your modern church will anger God and Moses today. And the originals were broken by Moses at the anger of idolatry when he holds in his hand thou shalt not make any gods and worship them after God spoke to it to them orally but they saw God and they still rebelled against God Adam and Eve saw God and they still rebelled against the Word of God David had the, the supreme heart and love to God and he still sinned with adultery and murder all have sinned and come short of the glory of God so Exodus 34 1 Exodus 34 1 and the Lord said unto Moses hew the two tables of stone like unto the first now Moses you make the tables of stone and I will write upon these tables of the words of the the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest God is going to forget the originals and he's going to make another copy and be ready in the morning and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount and no man shall come up with thee neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount and he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up into the Mount Sinai. And the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone. Now Moses brings the two tables of stone with him. The first time God spoke orally. The second time God had Two, to two tables of stone already prepared, written by his finger. Excuse me, I got allergies in my throat. I apologize. The third time, Moses cuts out his own tablets and brings them up to the mount. And he broke the first one. So, we have three sets of Ten Commandments. Oral, broken, and the ones that Moses brought up. We have Exodus 21 to 24. The law. The law is more than just the ten. Or the nine and a half if you're a Catholic or Lutheran. All the law was written on those tablets, not just the Ten Commandments. And the Bible says that they were written on, on both sides. So when you want to make a funny ha-ha movie to rank on God and Moses and you don't get it right. And when you see people display the Ten Commandments and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that's not how it was. So we're going to display the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, the tablets that Moses had and brought back down, were written the entire law on those ten, not just ten. And plus, it wasn't in English. We've been in Hebrew since we're dealing with Israelites. But if we're going to make 
monuments of idolatry and imagery to worship when we write out the second commandments and the commandment says you're not supposed to do that It's ridiculous what people will do in the name of sin. <laughs> Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31. In Deuteronomy 31, verse 26. Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. The law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the law, was all written, and then when finished, it was put on the side of the Ark of the Covenant. That's where it was to be kept. Moses' five books, Moses wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy are the law. Deuteronomy 5 Deuteronomy 5 You're not supposed to make a copy of the, of the Ten Commandments and display it as a monument. That violates the Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy 5, verse 1. And let's see. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day. Ye may learn them and keep them and do them. Israel, Jewish, Old Testament, not Christian, Gentile, in the church age. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb, Sinai. The Lord made us this covenant, made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive today, this day. And Moses talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire, orally. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord, for ye were afraid by reason of that fire, of the fire, and went not up into the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image. You mean a stone, metal, wood of the Ten Commandments? How is it you make a Ten Commandment image, an idol of the Ten Commandments, and you worship him, and you get upset because the courthouse will not display them? That's the stupidest, silliest thing to build the ark in Tennessee in America. And there's nowhere where God told the church age to build the ark. There's nowhere where God tells us to, to engrave the, the Ten Commandments. God tells us, go in all the world and preach the gospel and print the word of God. And many of you are now upset with me. Oh, I'm anti-Christian, I'm anti-American. No, I am a Bible-believing Christian. Let's read again, that thou shalt not make thee any graven image. You have to grave the letters and the numbers. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that's in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself unto them, or serve them. You know, I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to fight to keep the Ten Commandments. Meanwhile, you're not fighting to keep the Bible in the schools. You're not fighting to keep the Bible in the courtroom. You're not giving out free Bibles for people who don't have Bibles. i got to wonder, you know, I, I don't get much into that stuff, but are they the real Ten Commandments, or are they the Catholic Ten Commandments, or are they the, the Lutheran Ten Commandments, or are they the modern Ten Commandments?
people are going to stand before God at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, and they're going to be charged with sins that say, Oh God, I thought I was helping you. Lord, did we not cast out demons in your name? Lord God, didn't we do things in your name? Depart from me, work as iniquity. I never knew you. What you might be doing, what you might be fighting for, if it's against the scriptures, you have sinned against God. I'm telling you, this church age, God says, makes me sick. I want to vomit you out. You're wretched, you're poor, you're miserable. And I got to stand on the outside of the church at the door knocking, waiting for someone to come out. I'm just reading you what the scriptures say. You don't like it, that's tough. That's between you and God. I'm reading black and white what the scriptures say. Now, Israel and Moses. Revelation eleven nineteen. Revelation eleven nineteen. I'm trying to help you uh I'm trying if you're a Christian, I'm trying to help you to get rewards from God and not fire and, and ashes. And the thing is this church and these people have bought in to the modern let's bring the world in into our churches and the world and our into our service is you might be violating the scriptures and you might have a good full heart, you know, really love the Lord and do right, but you're doing wrong. You know, I really want to make cookies for my family. I love my family. I want to make cookies. In it, but I'll just add a little arsenic to the cookie batter. Good intentions will bring death. I didn't mean it. I didn't know what arsenic would do. Well, open your Bible and read. Are not these Ten Commandments they're fighting, are they not engraved in metal or stone or wood? What did God say? Go back and read it. Go back to Exodus 20. Go back to uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5. And look at what God says about it. And pray about it. How much can you get? Do not. Thou shalt not. And you do. To him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I hate to put these wet cloths on you, but we live in a perverted world that has entered into the church. Revelation chapter 11, verse 19. And the temple of God was open in heaven. So that's Harrison Ford. Looking for the ark. And there was seen in his temple the ark of the testimony. It's not in Germany. It is nowhere on this earth. The ark of the covenant is in glory right now. And there are Christians that believe Hollywood story. And they're probably still looking for the ark of the covenant. And heaven. You want to get the Ark of the Covenant? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and you'll see it. And there were lightnings. Oh, where did we hear that? And voices and thunderings. Where did we hear that? And an earthquake. Where did we hear that? And great hail. The nation of Israel got a little heaven that afternoon when they're looking at Mount Sinai and they still walked away from God in rebellion. And there are people who sit in a Bible-believing church with a, with a pastor that loves the Lord, prays, prays to the Lord, and seeks the welfare and the goodness of his people that sit before them and preaches the truth and they walk out of that church and still don't have no regard for God. And you might be one of them. God did not say display the Ten Commandments to any Christian. He said go out and preach the gospel. When you go out to the Ten Commandments, you are suggesting the law can save you. And the law can't save you. All the Ten Commandments shows I'm a sinner. No one can keep those Ten Commandments. 
And we'll get into that further. We'll look at the information in the Ten Commandments. How about Hebrews 9 4? I'm sorry to tell you, but you may be sinning with good intentions. There have been people who died by good intentions of another that did not mean to be dead. Hebrews 9 4. This is talking about the tabernacle. Which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold. Where was the golden pot that, that had the manna? We talked about that. And Aaron brought. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. And the tables of the covenant. In the most holy place. Before Jerusalem and Judah sinned and Babylon came and destroyed it. In the most holy place of the tabernacle of Moses, in the most holy place of Solomon's temple, was the ark. And in that ark, we already read that were the Ten Commandments, the law. You want to have the Ten Commandments on the statue, you got to print all the law of Exodus 21 to 24. Including the extra laws of Deuteronomy. Because there was more on those tables of stone than just the Ten Commandments. And then you got to write on the, on the front side and you got to write on the back side of those commandments. So you don't have it right. Catholics don't have it right because they took away commandment number two. The Lutherans took away commandment number two and broke ten into, into two. That's wrong. You want the Ten Commandments? They're in Mo, uh, they're in the books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Have a good time trying to put them on the, any monument. God did not ask us to build monuments, my friend. He asked us to preach the gospel. I may hate, you know, you're hateful and all that. You're not such a Christian. And, uh, you're one of the, yeah, okay. I don't think I will have to repent to the Lord Jesus Christ what I've said. I think you have to. Now I've got idols in my heart that don't belong there. We'll get we'll talk about that later on, Lord willing, but I didn't put them for the worship of God. I put them because I want because I am a sinner before God. And they shouldn't be there. But when you're going to use what God says don't do. In order to witness the people, it's not going to be approved. And you'll fall into the, you know, easy believism. That kind of stuff, using that stuff could be just as bad to say this prayer. Okay, now, you know, you're going to heaven. Oh, no, 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 no. But what about your worldly means? To get the glory. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, you know, we got the Ten Commandments. We got we got Noah's Ark. That's not what God said for us to do. Now, the book of Exodus, the Ten Commandments of Exodus 20, is for the nation of Israel that came out of Egypt under Moses. <clears throat> Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 5, them Ten Commandments are written by Moses, but them commandments are to Joshua taking the children of Israel into the, the promised land when Moses dies. And there are more laws in Deuteronomy than there are in Exodus. So Moses added to the law that God wrote upon those tables of stone. Because there are more laws in the book of Deuteronomy than there are in Exodus. Because Deuteronomy deals with the people who are going in the land. God already knew the people that are coming out of Egypt, except for the little ones, I forget what age they were. They're not going in the promised land. They're going to anger me so much. I'll save the best for last for the group of people that are going in. 20 or older. 
So which law are you going to write? You're going to write the ones under the, under the sinners in the wilderness? Who go in under Moses the law? Or are you going to give the, 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 the law for those sinners that go in the promised land under Joshua who completely fail God in Joshua? Or are you going to let the one, the Lord Jesus Christ, who fulfilled all the law, which we can't, and that the scriptures say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And when Paul wrote to a church that they're bringing the law back in, he said, no, 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 no. For by grace are we saved through faith, not of ourselves, least any man boasts. The Ten Commandments is the law. And you'll be sure to say, yeah, we're not saved by the law. Then what's the big deal with the Ten Commandments as a monument? I'll tell you what you do. Now, you, you, courtyards, I've been told, uh, you know, courthouses, courtyards, I've been told are prote federally protected. So get yourself somewhere near out of that federal protection zone. Get yourself a fistful of gospel tracts and pass them out to the people walking by. Now, God will honor that. That nonsense of that ark in Tennessee. You imagine if you would take all the money for that nonsense and put it to Bible believing missionaries all over the world, what could have happened? Oh, I guess you're against that too. You better believe I'm against that nonsense. And suckers are paying for it. Yeah, you heard me right. Suckers. I would laugh if those people paid that money for that. And when God shows us in heaven, well, that's not how it was in Tennessee. You mean there were no dinosaurs? Or the dinosaurs were that? Who cares? Get your seed. Go out and plant your seed. And get the devil upset. And get God pleased. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. He was buried. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Going all the world and preach the gospel. That's it right there. The church has taken its eyes off the gospel. The church is so going far today, they're taking their eyes off repentance. Many churches today, you don't need to repent. And then many of them will go, Oh, Jack Chick in the back of his track. You see, he's got works here. You have to do this work to be saved. You mean God did not say repent of your sins? Well, get your against that one too. I'm a Bible believer. You tell me what I'm against, what I'm not against. Go ahead. I'm just going to do what I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. I gave you the history now of the Ten Commandments, and some of you are probably like, wow, I didn't know that. And some of you got out of this whole lesson. He don't like the Ten Commandments statue. He's not against it. And some of you are like, this is going to be an interesting study. We're going to learn from the Bible. And some of you are going to be, he don't like the Ten Commandments statutes. I don't like it. He kicked me. I don't like being kicked. That's probably why you don't read your Bible. But I tell you what, when I read my Bible, I study my Bible, I try every day. And you know what? The Bible kicks me with who I am. My preacher kicks me with his messages because of who I am. God kicks me because of who I am. You need to be kicked. You need to be kicked in the backside and say, Hey, you know what? What? You're a sinner. Oh, yes, I am. Lord God, forgive me. I repent. Help me to battle that sin. Now, we're going to pick up, Lord willing, next week, we're going to pick up the first commandment, and we're going to look at each of the commandments little in-depth study, one at a time of each of those Ten Commandments. It's an interesting study. 
it's an interesting study when you're involved in a public ministry and I have had not many not many as I thought as people talk but I have had people say I keep the law I keep the Ten Commandments and you're going to see in this study I'll give you a warning you cannot keep the Ten Commandments you cannot we can't even get by the first commandment. Lord willing, that'll be next time. 